Uh, I'm just going to start rolling it, to be honest. I don't really know uh, shit. You're not doing an intro. Uh, I could do an intro. Do you want me to do an intro? Uh, <laughs> you're a classic. <laughs> hey guys, you're listening to the Shadow Channel podcast. Uh, this is the whatever the fuck edition. The dark, serious, sinister <laughs> corner of what we call the internet. internet. Yeah, it's something along those lines. Like This is meant to be like a, a different kind of show. I was going to call it like Seven or something. Like Shadow Seven. or Clueless. Huh? Clueless. Clueless. <laughs> Clueless. Clueless. <laughs> Why Clueless? Just like Clueless and Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Clueless. Clueless works for me. Right? Um, aye, so we were talking earlier about... Uh, am I supposed to be like the, the kind of arbiter of the... <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you told me in, uh, when know. we were in Beijing in March. Yeah, actually, yeah. in March of last year, you actually told me about your your new, uh, your new like, in- incentive to alleviate the suffering of children in the third yeah, world. Man, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Pretend you're like a fucking humanitarian. Yeah, we're just going to feed them... Uh, other children, <laughs> you know, it's sort of half the amount of poor kids. <laughs> Rent, reuse, recycle, rendering poverty obsolete <laughs> <laughs> by the destruction, the destruction and liquidation of the bodies of the poor. <laughs> New from Feed Cannibal Co. Yeah. <laughs> Cannibal Co. <code. laughs> it's like, it's like, um, fucking. What is that again? It's like that's what they were doing with cattle for ages. Year by yeah. that, like it's how mad oh, cow disease started. Is that this that place? This. Uh, I was watching that Man vs. Food and uh, there's a farm in America that grows what's known as double bacon and it's essentially what they sort of do is just sort of feed pigs pigs, you know? Yeah. For no, that extra bacon flavour. Yeah, no, I've heard that like uh, they, for chickens, uh, because like the beak is technically like high in protein, yeah. in order to make the shells of the eggs that they lay like thicker, they, gr- they take the beaks Grind of the, the dead chickens and grind them up into powder and then put them in the food with the chickens yeah, but I mean, and feed them back to themselves. Ah, I know, but people were using ground teeth for toothpaste for years, so, you know. Yeah, I could see that being a yeah. thing. Like, they were using cocaine for Coca-Cola, but that was a legitimate ah, yeah. thing. But here, did they not or elements of it. Some, some, uh, I'm sure some, in some sort of ex- extremities of uh, the third world, they still use cocaine and Coca-Cola. <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite funny, I was uh, speaking to someone from like South America and they were saying people are sort of quite ignorant the people that grow the coke yeah. they're like oh no people just sort of take it to sort of be good at their job and stay up and that it's like nah it's just some businessman snorting it and going yeah. to a strip club I love South and America money at, like, South America news. and Africa right now are in that like in between period where like some of the countries have kind of pulled themselves slightly out of poverty yeah. and, then and you they're go, now in like the second world and you go like 50 kilometres north yeah, you go 50 <laughs> kilometres north you know? and it's just a bunch of guys like dancing oh, around yeah. with no clothes on <laughs> dying of malaria you know yeah. it's, it's like Brazil it's like I say we shouldn't laugh yeah. but you know <laughs> yeah. you know it's, it's like it's Brazil been, it's been like, 30 years since yeah. it's, you know like, Brazil's economy has grown at like 6% a year and if you go like 150 kilometres north of Rio de Janeiro where there's like tan chicks on the beach <laughs> yeah, man. you'll see like basically like a tribe of like uh, people that have never been discovered before and they like kill the cameramen <laughs> when they come across them well, you see, with, like uh, spears and shit that, yeah. that uh, Ross Kemp on Gangs was on the other night and uh, they were in Papua New Guinea which is I mean like like a, a time capsule you know you have like head <laughs> headhunters and cannibals etc are, are you doing a podcast? yeah yeah we are yeah we are right now yeah uh, I think you're in it you're now officially yeah, yeah. in it, Andrew. My name's uh, Andrew. It's not like we had any standards. Stories on YouTube. Andrew, just, uh, ca- like ca- come be our pa- Carl yeah. Pilkin. Then. Yeah, <laughs> Andrew. What is that, what? It's not like we had any standards to begin with when we turned what the mic on. We're, we're, we're talking about the tribesmen of Papua New Guinea and how they fuck goats, but they don't have any goats, so they just fuck each other. They just pissed off so many people, but yeah, they don't so have electricity, you know, so it's unlikely they'll hear this. The Super Bowl. Woo! Oh, wait, the Super Bowl's on next week. <laughs> Super Bowl. That's like. That is like, it's the worst sport in the world that everybody watches. Oh. <laughs> Eight it, minutes of game time, 45 yeah. minutes of it's adverts. Important. So, yeah. important. Yeah, and then another like hour of them setting up the lines again. I'm pretty sure that, that that's, that's the only way you can actually, yeah. uh, Budweiser can it's the only, it's, it's the only like, sport, yeah. Yeah. It's the only like sport other than purpose. darts and curling where you can be like yeah. openly, morbidly obese. If it wasn't for the be... Super Bowl, where would Beyonce be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> 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 Did you hear her performance at the Grammys like pissed 
so many people off. Yeah, because she, she has like, a nice ass. And yeah. Miley Cyrus doesn't because she's got like yeah, a wasn't chicken she, butt. She, like, wasn't she twerking on a chair? Nah, she was just like, was like the big she thing. She just like, came out like an actual woman, not some little girl with no ass. Like, you know, she didn't stick her tongue out and she didn't have like a 40 year old man like grinding on her for like, yeah. the majority of it. A and I mean, like, man Robin Thicke that looks the like... spitting image of her father. Like, <laughs> yeah, Robin Thicke. If you go back. Billy Ray Thicke. Hey, guys, <laughs> guys, you listen to this. I want you to go on Google and I want you to type in a picture. Uh, sorry, type in a picture, type in uh, and look for a picture of Billy Ray Cyrus from about 1989 when he was doing Achy Breaky Heart and he Don't looks exactly like Robin no. Thicke. Okay, was that, was that the year that uh, line dancing so it came back <laughs> and, and every, it, it, made a brief, as... it made a brief comeback. You come back in probably. Can I, can I, uh, we have a, if we you have want. Pull up a pew. Pull up a pew. We have a new guest, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. His name is Andrew. Hello guys, how are you all doing? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Tell us a bit about yourself. Do you like line dancing? Do you like line dancing? I, I do do, 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 on, do you own a cowboy sh- shirt? Only on special occasions yeah. such as weddings, you, you have funerals. to hold your belt. <laughs> in order to do it, you have to have both thumbs underneath your belt buckle. Now, have you noticed with the four fingers? Just like spear the belt buckle. No, no, you know, like an, I'm, I'm an evolution, ready. an evolution of like sorry, activities for sad singles. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes around like, like, like sorry, like ballroom night, dancing. Night, yeah, ballroom line dancing. Dance. Yeah. And then you get to 1989, you've got your line dancing. Yeah. You get to the late 90s, and bingo, suddenly young and in. Yeah. Now we've got internet dating, and then yeah. it was one of those. It was one of those genres like the genres that occasionally silent discos. Yeah. Occasionally pop their heads. Like these, these genres occasionally pop their heads above the parapet, and then within two years they're back to Thursday nights with the over sixties at the community <laughs> centre. <again>. They're <laughs> the only people doing line dancing. Now. It's, it's, it's amazing how like so, uh, like these seniors are doing these things like every day. You know, line dancing, bingo, like probably maybe not internet dating, but you know. And well, it's suddenly one of them well, become well, a crazy. Well, Drake, well. Do you reckon like a hundred years, like the seniors will be like playing all these crazes, like kind like, of like marbles and Pokemon cards and that. Like, you know, every generation. Cause <laughs> yeah. We didn't exactly. Grow well, up like I'm thinking about dancing, these, these, you know, you know these believers, like yeah. Justin Bieber fans, oh, and say, no. no, I don't care if you no. got arrested. I don't care if you was drag racing. I'm a believer to the end till the day I yeah, die. I'm sorry. I think about a bunch of eighty year old women in like a fucking retirement home. In you know, much, 60 years. Yeah, as much as I hate Sing him. Right? to baby, baby. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as much as I hate him, if you give any sort of spoiled middle class moron $75 million and you expect them not to race fancy cars about, yeah. you yeah. expect them not to be in trouble, then you're a fucking idiot. You know? I know. You know, the weird <laughs> thing is, I think Justin Bieber got screwed because. Given the amount of money he has generated, how is he only worth seventy five million? Yeah, well, what's his manager on? Like, you know? Yeah, I mean, but, you got to think about because surely Bieber must have. If you think about all the money he's ever made, like every dime in the states, baby, baby, yeah, baby. every every music video, every fucking radio station every syndication, where they play, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> every shattered soul. Yeah. And the the thing about teenage girls though is, I I, I think it's T J Kirk. He's a gent on YouTube, and he says that it's quite true. He's like. The, the thing that the, the, that's most annoying about Teenage Girls is that it's that kind of music, One Direction and Justin Bieber, is a genre or an art form which appeals to one demographic but is foisted on all others. Like, everybody has to listen but to what Teenage don't, Girls they don't, like. They don't know? give a fuck about like how good the music is. All they really care about is, oh, I like Justin Bieber. Regardless of what song he brings out, it's, it's like a football team, whether they win or they get beat, yeah. you go support them. So do you reckon like, in like 20 years time you can have like 40 year old women meeting outside the pub to go like fighting like Justin Bieber versus like like One Direction casuals? Yeah. Like. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> An yeah. audience for a Justin Bieber concert has less pubes than the Rolling Stones <laughs> have teeth. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what if the Rolling Stones have done a half a dozen yeah, between yeah. them? Well, one of them was a pedo, was he not? The oh, one of the Rolling Stones. Mar- I'd be very surprised because I'm surprised that the Bieber BBC sex scandals haven't made their you mean way to the ITV BBC yet. sex ring, like the cult yeah. of the BBC is like the new the Catholic League of Church. Pedos, man. <laughs> it's yeah. like the, the new League Catholic Church. Pedos, this untouchable yeah. city, like. In, one of the things Jimmy the, Savile was like an ordained member. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. wasn't he no, like anyway, a, a an honorary the, member of the Catholic Church? Savile or something had like, like this sort of like pedophile like uh, crown crown yeah. jewels. He had a pedo throne. He had a pedo throne that he used to sell. At least, at least you could hear him coming, you know, because all the chains. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, man, I would have been safe. I'm it's, male, it's all the right. Eastenders guys because as if Eastenders and Coronation Street weren't like morally like. Sickening and reprehensible enough 
they're all fucking pedophiles. Like that one guy, what's, what's it, that? he said he was on a TV show in the 80s, and I love like the candid way. It started off by, you know, they had to try and bleed the information out of like these women like a sieve. Uh, and now it's just like, yeah, we were on Blue Peter and he yeah. basically sexually and I got assaulted me. fingered by Rolf yes. Harris. <laughs> live on live TV at half two in the afternoon. Yeah, well, you can never guess where he put his didgeridoo. Yeah, man. <laughs> Tie uh, the kangaroo down. I think, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think he tried to bugger the queen when he, when he drew that picture of her. You yeah. know, he fucked her teeth up. Uh, he drew he drew a picture of her. Did caricature? What, uh, Neil, Neil Buchanan, Art Attack. Oh, How yeah, has he yeah, not yeah. been taken in yet? Wait, Neil Buchanan, Get man. Get a tyrant. He, he played like fucking strap-ons behind those big massive fake I don't pencils. Know, here, man, he, he, does, he doesn't need to do that. He's in like a reasonably successful band and stuff, you know? He's got money in that. Neil he, Buchanan? Buchanan. The, guy, the, the guy from Art Attack. Really? The guy that's always done Art Attack. Yeah. With the always a red jumper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's in a reasonably successful band. He really? doesn't need to do What band is he in? I can't remember their exact name. Do they play? Like guys, a whole look, look, look it, this it's up. It's not my sort of thing, but I just remember uh, being in that, having the same conversation. You know, w- imagine how sad it'd be to be the guy on Art Attack. You know? It'd be alright for the money, but like drawing the same finger painting for like is Art Attack years, BBC you know? or um, is it no, Disney? It's, it's, uh, it, isn't it Disney? I no, no, BBC, it, it, man. It, 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 it was uh, for the BBC that it moved up to. Uh, Disney after a while because uh, Jonathan Ross. Sure. Jonathan, Jonathan Ross. Ross. Yeah. Uh, how is Jonathan Ross not being? Yeah, yeah. How is there not like a four hundred strong you. armed I'm police sure. force outside his house <laughs> with like tanks and tear gas well, yeah, right they now? Should, they should just sort of like like ten. You should be able to go into the bookies, right? Yeah. And they should just have a list of everyone that works for the BBC. <laughs> and just put, put, yeah. Put, 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 target system. Target who's system. next? You know. Yeah. Like, how, was it boys or girls? Yeah. Like, was it on like, studio? Was it in the Jer- dressing room? Jeremy Paxman's been sucked off by little <laughs> fi- Filipino boys underneath the Newsnight desk. It's like, hi, live from I'm Jeremy Paxman. Yeah. <laughs> this is Newsnight live from Manila. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Pedro, yeah. my eight-year-old monkey you boy. Might, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they call them child it's, slaves. It's, it, it really gives a new meaning to the phrase the thriller in Manila. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the pedo in Manila. Yeah, no, no it's like. It, it's, yeah, but those places, they're like fucking havens for the yeah. pedophiles. You know? It's like, you know how Muslims go to Mecca? Pedos go to Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. look at Gary Glitter. Pedophile, it's like the modern, like, Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you just go, like, Thailand. He's just, just, belly, Bang- just belly dancing and Bangkok, people, like, snorting Manila, coke off the back of five year olds. It's like, it's like and that bar in uh, uh, Star Wars, you know? <laughs> you can <laughs> go in. <It's> like, <laughs> like, some Filipino yeah. waitress, like, that's clearly, like, 12 year old, you know, getting yeah. slapped on the arse by, like, fucking Jimmy Savile. Yeah, man. Well, that's the thing is, um, like that was the joke that I told uh, on the podcast a couple of years ago fucking about a year and a half ago now it was like the first Star Wars movie is in episode one not like the good ones uh, the, the bad ones right and, um, <laughs> Jar Jar Binks the yeah. mega fair and um, basically it, when they're, they're like oh yeah we got Darth Maul you know but was he the master or the apprentice yeah. and that was the thing with like they got Gary Glitter and they were like sound you know like, yeah. oh, you wanna be in my gang my? and then it was turns You're, out it was Jimmy Savile have, have you heard that uh, See, one of Gary Glitter's famous songs is called Hello, Hello, I'm Back Again, right? And uh, it, it's quite ironic because, you know, he had great hindsight to say, hello, 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 I'm back. Yeah. Did you love me like a good little girl? Yeah. You know? Well, fucking the guy from Lost Prophets, he might be oh, the crown in the jewel. Uh, sorry, the, the jewel in the crown. That guy's, mm. nah, he's like, you know, these copycat serial killers. He's just seen all these old sort of crony, like, BBC people that just sort of like, oh, nah, nah it wasn't rape, you know? Yeah. I was there, I'm a witness, you know? This cronyism in the BBC. Yeah. Then the Lost Prophet guy says, oh, these are just fucking pussies. Hey, <laughs> I'll show you how it's really done. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah. fucking next level. Yeah. It's like his life directed by Wes Craven. When I read it, so, <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember when uh, the, the uh, news first uh, sort of came out, and uh, not knowing the name, Ian Watkins, and there was two girls sort of sitting on the bus talking about, oh, how do you hear that? Ian Watkins is a pedo in that. And uh, one of them turns around and goes, oh, is that the guy for Steps? And they're like, oh, yeah. She goes, oh, I knew he looked like a pedo. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah they, they, they said that, like, he was the one with his name <laughs> yeah, wrong or something. Or what, what's that other Is one? that the guy that's Slander also... Slander or something. Is that H? Yeah, H, yeah, yeah. Ian yeah, yeah. Watkins. Yeah, because uh, he's gay as well. So the Christian crowd must love that. Oh yeah. Like, oh, yeah, of course. He's <laughs> he's a fucking faggot. Well, not that we have, like, Southern American Christians. <laughs> whatever, like... Like the, ch- yeah, like, the Church of England the is, like... The Anglican Church. Yeah. Yeah, the Anglican he's Church are like, are, like, unbelievably racist and homophobic and intolerant, but they're really polite about it. 
They're like, oh, we, well, we it's, we it's these gays. Here. They caused the floods in Northern England. Yeah, they come yeah, along to the communion yeah, on Saturday. That, and we'll, that uh, UKIP yeah. guy. Uh, Farage. It was uh, Nigel Farage. Is Ooh. that the one that says that uh, it, it was raining because of gay marriages? Or oh, no, no. That was one of their councillors. Yeah, yeah. But they, yeah. Oh, they've got some nutty like, sort of back yeah, benches, man. you know. That's the thing, though. Like, the, the big thing is, though, that Labour and the Tories have got them as well. Yeah, but, but the Tories have, like, closet racists and, well, no, like, almost overtly racist, but also, like, a huge backbench, um, almost majority, I said almost far too many times, who are, who are like, massively against gay marriage and shit like but, that, you So, know? you kept the people that were, sorry, uh, too posh to join the BNP, you know? <laughs> yeah, and there are also people that, like, got sick of the Tories, but some of them are Labour defectors as well, because yeah. they, they, uh, they, they kind of, they platform in, in quite, like, working class towns as well. Like, I don't think they're the BNP, not anywhere close, but they're basically old man politics, it's. Be, it, I was saying, Alan earlier. It's like if the, we the don't average know BNP what you member. Are, you're not welcome. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The average. We don't take time with your caps around here. here. It's Skeeter. like the average BNP member is like a 55 year old car salesman from Durham with yeah, erectile yeah. dysfunction. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this is Dave from Don't Sheffield. like immigrants. Free market. Earth. Get out of my country. Yeah. yeah. Get out of my fucking country. But like. Uh, no, oh, that's like that's the they canvas for that kind of thing. You know, they oh, the canvas for the canvas it's for those the whole kinds of immigrant people. issue. You know, I mean, we should just send them all back home. You know, send the Romanians home. Yeah. Send the Romans home. Send the Angles home. Send the Saxons home. Send the Jutes home, and all those bloody Celts. And then the Neanderthals want their land back from the Celts. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly. In the we're gonna have <laughs> to like like too. Jurassic Park. We're gonna have to like rebirth. It's just the a velociraptor turns off. Hey, we don't take care of your. Well, actually, they've around. done genetic tests, and they were like, I heard someone oh, talking about it. So like. They they found out that like based on DNA there's DNA there's a lot of like in some of the more uh, like uh, uh, deserted or not deserted uh, some of the more difficult to reach parts of the country. Oh, the more uh, cut off. Sort yeah, of. yeah. Um, there are like um, isolated parts. Yeah. There are people with like large quantities of like Neanderthal DNA. Oh, because their genetics haven't. Mm, yeah. Sorry, they've not had yeah. the same gene pool. They found so. out that like fucking Johnny Knoxville was like oh, incredibly yeah. inbred. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> he like twenty four percent inbred. Yeah, because he, he's from like a town in like his family are from like a town in Austria where like or somewhere like that where uh, there's it's very isolated so. The, the, there's an insane amount of inbreeding in the local community. So it's like cousin A marries yeah. cousin B who marries cousin by, C, you know. He got told by his doctor and he was just fucking laughing his ass off, <laughs> apparently. He doesn't give a shit. He's very terrible, but you know. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's one of the reasons he's so insane. But yeah, they need to. They need, it's, it's, see, the problem is. In 200 countries around the world, it's legal to get married to your cousin. Yeah, so man, we're looking that up. First yeah, cousin exactly. marriage. Yeah. You, you to First cousin marriage is legal shit, in the UK. Like, yeah. That's, I mean, I don't even think it's, it's genuinely like, legal. You could legal. ban it, you could ban it, but it would probably be best to just be like, information campaigns, don't fuck your cousin. <laughs> it's probably not good for your kids. <laughs> or, the, or the offspring that will inevitably result because if you're fucking your cousin, let's face it, you've not heard of just contraception. Just like, hey man, hey man, there's, there's other girls out there, you know, you, you yeah, don't have to seven stick billion to your people. family members. There's seven thing. billion people on the planet now, you have no excuse to fuck someone <laughs> exactly, that, you knew, exactly. that you knew two weeks ago. If you knew them more than two weeks ago, unless it's, you're it's like childhood friends. It's off the cards. Yeah, uh, like they have to be like a blur on hey, a night Hey, wrap, wrap up, kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, no, that 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 thing with um with uh, Ian Watkins though. Apparently, he was on Nevermind the Buzzcocks a few years ago. Yeah, and they they made some joke about paedophiles, <laughs> and the camera cam, t- cam uh, sorry the, the camera, camera pan. panned to him, and just as it was going over the panel, and it rested on him because he was sitting on the end seat, and just before it cuts to the next shot. Um, you just see him grinning along with everybody else and you think, wow, he's a massive paedophile and no one on the panel knows. They just made a joke about pedophilia and he's like, you know, like just laughing along and apparently like his password for his computer was like, I fuck kids. Yeah, I fuck kids. Like yeah. it was the most overt paedophile ever. Like, no, yeah, here, it's almost right. If, he's like the guy from screen. If you're trying to break in a pedo's, Copycat pedo. If you're trying to break in a paedophile's computer, what is the first thing you type in? Because it's not going to be password one. It's gonna be I fuck kids, you know. I was amazed to hear like, cause it what it clearly wasn't something that was like cognitively dissonant where he was like, I don't associate that with myself. I have this internal contradiction that I'm not really aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It was like but he was you, fully aware of it, and I could tell he was fully aware of it based on. Do you on, treat it as a mil- mental illness, or, or do you just that's, say that's something I've been thinking you, a lot about? Do you say? Do you say it is wrong? You go to jail. End of story. Because yeah. because you you should just not think like that. Yeah. Or is it something hardwired where you know m- maybe it's it's something that c- could just sort of 
be dormant and then yeah. when puberty kicks in blah 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 yeah and, and there's a low level like one of the reasons that there's ethnic groups is that if you leave a group of people in an area for long enough you're going to see like their pigmentation it's, change generally speaking because of the gene pool you're going to really, see different I, heights I really and like, weights and bone I really structures don't like using, you know I really don't like using this comparison but j j just for sort of argument's sake yeah s say yeah uh, you know what what decides whether someone's like gay for example yeah is it hardwired it could, it's obviously not a choice, you know what I mean? Yeah. But is it something that's dormant and gets switched on? Is it so it's something to do with how you're brought up? That's what I'm saying. Is, are these things sort of how you're brought up? Is it hardwired? You, you know, because it, it makes a big difference to whether you can punish it or not. You yeah. know what I mean? Because exactly. if it's something that's hardwired and you really can't help, these people should be sort of... Yeah, they used to treat homosexuality as if it was a mental illness yeah, as well, like full on. It was, you know? uh, I was reading recently, I don't know what country it is, I think it's one of the, uh, these sort of Far East countries. They were talking about chemical castration for all yeah, people, you know? Yeah, because there was that gay guy in the 50s that yeah. worked at like um, Bletchley Park for the uh -huh. Codebreakers, and he was like one oh, of yeah, the. Oh, yeah, he got chemically castrated, didn't he? Pioneers of. I don't know if it's a permanent it was, thing. It was for, uh, it's chemically castrated. It's chemical castration. I'm, I'm sure Isn't it something I'm you need sure to continue sort of, to administer drugs on? No, I'm sure. It just sort of like sort of kills the sort of testosterone. It just yeah. kills your sex drive. Yeah, yeah. It, it 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 kills your sex drive and it and it causes weird like stuff with your metabolism. I, mean, I think to happen. It, I think it, it I think it sort of because mm. uh, that guy just got depressed. It, it like messed up his I body and he just killed it, himself. I don't think it like, makes horrible. you impotent or anything, but I think it sort of you know just sort of dials the whole sort of sex drive to, yeah. to zero. I mean the idea of like chemical castration, like these same countries will have that as a policy and at the same time they'll be like, you know, often in the, in Eastern Europe it's quite common and at the same time they'll be like, yeah, you know, the Nazis were terrible, well, not, unless they're neo-Nazis uh, which is also quite common. <laughs> uh, the Nazis were terrible but it's like, one of the worst things that the Nazis did, it's like people have been killing people forever but the Nazis perfect the the, the concept of dehumanizing Master, people. Yeah, yeah. Like take their shoes off, Turn them cut their number. hair, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that That is like, that is debut you totalitarianism it's, that's 101 seen, uh, the prisoner no. no you know that sort of I, th I think it's 70s it's like it's always on ITV4 and it's sort of this this uh, this spy sort of James Bond esque guy gets uh, taken to this island because he's recently retired and he still has information that they need to procure and then he's like oh you're number three or you're number four it's like oh, I'm not a number I am a person yeah. like, with a name and they're like no you are number four <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> no crazy. like uh, it, it's it's it is the ultimate way to dehumanize someone like the, I, they do the same thing with like uh, female the, circumcision in like weird ass countries oh, it's the same it, thing it, you just completely they Sub often administer Africa, it as as a punishment yeah. if some girl's like wayward or she's getting around town or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. they do it they, it's literally a way of like destroying well, see, a human being going back to what up. I was about to say on that uh, Papua New Guinea thing yeah on this Ross Kemp on Gangs uh, program they, they were just sort of showing you at, at the start of it they put guns to his head and they're like oh now we're just seeing if you were scared yeah and then there was parts where like people just sort of flinging machetes about and then there was this woman that they believed was a witch so they decided to stick hot pokers inside of her yeah because then, because someone claimed she ate the heart of a stillborn child or yeah. something, you know, and it's just this sort of like it spreads to the next yeah. village, and then a posse turns up with like you know pitchforks and like mm. that's the big thing with Islam. Like people will say like, um, well, Islam is not any more sorry, like Islam's the same as Christianity. Christianity is peaceful and mild, and it's fine, you know. Uh, or or the argument they make is well, Islam's bad. Unlike Christianity, all these people should be Christians because Christianity is cool. But in Africa, it's it, Christianity is nice here. In Africa, like there are so many cases of like people being killed for witchcraft because they believe they they integrate the old tribal superstitions like see, the, the voodoo problem, stuff in with Christianity, and then they mingle it together, and then they deal out these really fucking horrific punishments to people I, based I think, on uh, Jesus. You know? it's, it's when people take this idea that like, the the Bible, you know how in Islam, the Quran is the word of God. Yeah. It, it's the people that sort of treat the Bible like that, and you know they, they go in these like witch huntings, and you know like you just go like some sort of Nigerian village, where, like sort of three hundred people chasing down a woman because she's pregnant, yeah, and she's only like seventeen or something, and it's just like burn her, you know that yeah. Monty Python scare. She's a witch, yeah, she turned into a new. That's literally what's still happening. In a it's lot it's just hearsay, and you know like all the all the bollocks, like but uh, yeah, but see see one thing, one or eight thing. That I read in there, or about the Quran, was although it says that it's the word of God, and you, you can't challenge that. 
funnily enough, in the word of God, it tells you to question knowledge yeah. and question it again. Which yeah. you know, so it's a contradiction in terms. You know? I take the Sam Harris view. It's like every religion like appeared tomorrow that was about like learning everything you could about philosophy <laughs> and science and not harming other people. Uh, you know, I would still say that well, your belief in the higher power thing doesn't have evidence, but you can believe it. I'm but not going to hold that against you. But if that came around tomorrow, uh, for one thing, it would probably be too se- decentralized in order for it to be. Uh, sort of uh, syndicated or franchised around uh, to, to loads and loads of people, you know? See, the, it the, wouldn't be easily spreadable and it needs to have this sort of contagion characteristic. That's, that's, in that's a problem I've got with, you know, you know, like uh, sort of Dawkins atheism, so to speak. Yeah. It, he, he's almost sort of turning it into a religion, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. No. Can... See, I I hate the atheist movement. I don't hate it. I dislike the atheist movement because I don't. I'm not a part of a movement. I'm just be... an atheist. That's just part of you what know, I believe. Your beliefs and your religion. If you could perfect religion, as as far as I'm concerned, you should only need one commandment. Yeah. And as as much of an anti theist I am, there's a quote. I don't know if it's from the Bible or one of these books or whatever. And apparently Jesus came back and just said, "Be good to each other." Yeah. And that, that was that was his sort of one commandment, but if you take that a step further and just say, you can do whatever you choose, whatever you please, as long as you don't affect someone else's right yeah. to choose, to do as they please. Yeah. And then if you want to believe in the flying spaghetti monster in your own space, in your own time, where you don't force anyone else to believe that, yeah, exactly, that's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You, I mean, yeah. you can you can talk about it and you can explain to other people your beliefs, but the moment that you sort of turn it into religion by forcing other people yeah. to take what you say as this divine, like, sort yeah. of... Well, one of the things about cultures and, and, and large groups of people is, in order... If, if, well, if you have a large group of people, in the eyes of, like, psychopaths and sociopaths, that becomes just a more effective and larger but see, tool, see, more powerful tool. So the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, kind of have as a doctrine that everyone should be similar. Like we were talking earlier about cultures, you know, they all pierce their ears and shit. So one of the things about it is, given the belief system, because it's a belief, and, and, and but it's not rooted in first principles or morals, it's polluted, it's, 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 um, it's rooted in an ideology, which is this idea where I believe this and I believe this, but because I believe the ideology, I'll also believe this, without questioning it too much, because I want to get the set, I want to get all three, I want to get a hat trick of, of beliefs. So the mean? first two could be moral, the third is not. So, you know, love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself, anyone could say that, you don't have to be Jesus, don't steal shit yeah, and kill yeah, people, yeah. and then the last one's like, and if you see a homosexual, stone them to death. <laughs> and because you've, uh, you know, prescribed to the first three, it has an effect on your life. You misconstrue the effect it has as being because of the morality, the innate morality of the ideology, not because of the individual tenets, which are objectively moral. You, 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 think- you then say that, well, because it's worked for me and it's working so far and I've transformed my life and I'm no longer a drug addict anymore or whatever, now you go, well, and I also hate homosexuals because it says that in the book, but which has think, already done so much for me. the vast majority of sane individuals would sort of not need a book to tell them what's right and wrong, yeah. you know? So I need yeah. some 2,000-year-old yeah. book that was written and like, I'm, I'm sure half it got destroyed by uh, Zoroaster's, you know, in, yeah. in, uh, in Persia. Because that's when they yeah. started, sorry. Well, there's big shit. I mean, like, Christianity's guilty of a lot of fucking crimes against humanity. Like, it, well, for example, it, <laughs> it burned down the, the, the Great Library at Alexandria. Yeah. It, it destroyed it. It destroyed the schools of philosophy it in Greece. It destroyed, sorry, five... Greece has never recovered. Look destroyed, at Greece now. It destroyed yeah. the innocence of five million young boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. And, and probably girls, and then the nunneries were fucking around with yeah. them. But uh, for the last minute here, because I'm going to end at about half an hour, so 30 minutes, um, if you want. Um, and and, uh, you know to conclude on a lighter note uh, (laughs) Jimmy Savile's dead (laughs) yeah Jimmy Savile's dead we don't have to worry about it if you're worried about all these pedophiles don't worry we're we're getting them one by one we're taking them out the the, the BBC League of Pedos the good thing about them is (laughs) they're a rather ageing bunch you know they probably need a Zimmer frame they might not catch you if you sort of walk at a brisk pace and uh Unless you're in a BBC Top of the Pop studio, which doesn't really like, run anymore, you'll probably be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the Pops, man, that place so, must uh, be like just a cesspool. Never send your kids to 
gigs at the BBC unless it's Jules yeah. Holland you know it, it, it gives you a completely different impression because a lot of this shit happened in like the, the like the 80s and the 70s that oh, every time you were seeing on, like man. Top of the Pops and like still you know like on. Morrissey's on stage yeah. somewhere in that room this kid's getting fucked <laughs> and that, this, like you know this, you know Jimmy Savile's got his hand down a girl's top while like Rolf <laughs> Harris is fingering a boy in the bathroom <laughs> you know <laughs> anyway guys we're gonna fucking leave it there uh, thanks a lot for listening if you're still at, uh, with us at the 30 minute mark I'd like to thank Lewis and Andrew for being on the you're show. Welcome. Andrew, you came in a little bit late, but I promise yes. the next time you're on, you will get to speak I will, more. I, I promise. I will happily enjoy the next pod. Yes, that sounds thing. good. Over All right, and guys, out. Uh, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, and I think I have a Facebook page still. Um, and I'm you'll probably find too. them in the description. If you don't Hello. find them in the description, you'll find them on the channel page. I'll catch you guys later on.